Look at this guy. Under my desk. Totally chill. Couldn't care less about the thunder. What a legend. Congratulations on passing your IE. Well done. Welcome to the club. Welcome to the world of being a professional diving instructor. You have taken a big step up from being a dive master to becoming an instructor. Now you can certify people for a whole range of courses, but your name is their instructor on their certification cards and have the legal weight of responsibility over your head like a big black cloud that we like to call liability for the next seven years. I'm joking, of course, passing your instructor course is a big deal. You should go out and celebrate and have an awesome time, but I'm here to tell you it's not enough. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. This is your Mouthpiece Monday for this week. My name's James. If you're new to this channel, welcome. I use my passion and expertise as a professional diving instructor to help make you a better diver. So if you love scuba diving as much as I do, don't forget to click that subscribe button down there, hit the little bell icon, and you'll never miss any of our awesome content. Every Monday, we post a new video called Mouthpiece Mondays, which is a collection of thoughts and opinions on the latest scuba news and trends. This week's a bit of a special one because it's actually part one of a two-part series. Haven't quite decided on the title yet, but it's going to be something along the lines of how to get your dream job as a dive instructor. It could also be how not to get your dream job as a dive instructor. We're going to look at it from both sides. I've held many positions in the diving industry where I've been responsible for hiring dive instructors to work for various companies. I've hired literally hundreds of dive instructors in my time, but I've also not hired thousands more, by which I mean I've received an application that I just paid no mind to. So what I want to do is pass on my expertise to you and help your CV end up in the we're interested, let's start up an interview pile, as opposed to the circular file. Now, as I said, this is going to be a two-parter. So today I'm going to be talking about how to prepare your application, what should be included on your CV. And later in this video, I'm going to be giving you five supplementary skills that are much in demand in the dive industry that have nothing to do with diving, but will help make your CV stand out from the crowd. And then in next week's video part two, I'm going to be talking about how to actually approach dive centers, how to get your application into the hands of the people that matter and make the decisions. In case you're new to this channel, I'm still very much an active dive instructor and I teach under my own company, Miami Technical Diving, and we focus mainly on technical diving. But before I became a technical diving instructor, I was an Aussie, an open water scuba instructor, plying my trade around the world and got to work for some fantastic diving operations. Before we get into the details of what should be included in your CV and what should not be included in your CV, I want to show you a quick example that seems to be coming very, very common on how to absolutely be ignored by any dive center and end up at the bottom of the barrel when it comes to applying for a job. So now I'm talking about the Facebook dive jobs around the world or whatever groups that you see out there. There are literally hundreds of different groups out there and I see posts like this all the time. There's no doubt that social media is a fantastic tool to help you find your dream job. But there's a professional way to go about using it, and then there's this. Now, tell me, in what other professional industry is this an acceptable way to find employment? Yep, you see tons of these. It took me less than a minute to find this. A random post floated out there into the internet ether with no specific aim, no personalization, and just a random group of words that could literally describe any other dive instructor on the planet. What's gonna make you different? What's gonna make you stand out? Oh, you love the ocean? Wow, truly earth shattering. I've got news for you. So does every other dive instructor on the planet. What do you think, we're doing this for the money? Oh, oh, you did think you're doing this for the money? Mm. Hate to be the one to break it to you, pal. Pin your ears back, cause here comes some numbers. Paddy has 137,000 active professional members. That's everyone from Dive Master and above. And they're adding about 1,400 professional members per month. And that's just Paddy. That doesn't even include the good agencies or Nowi. And every single one of them is your competition. And guess what? Every single one of them loves the ocean. When I ran a dive center in the Caribbean, I'd get CVs all the time. And literally the only description of the person was, I love the ocean. Imagine you were going for a job as an accountant and all you put on your application was, I'd like to be an accountant, I like numbers. Amazing. Want to tell me that you can fog a mirror as well? 
In the digital age, you still need a professional resume, even if you're just gonna copy the contents of it to a Facebook page, which I don't really recommend because only the laziest operators that are scraping the barrel for their staff are the operations that go there to hire people. The best dive operators don't have to do that because they understand that they offer their employees a quality operation to work at, so they can sit back and let employees come to them, which is what you will have to do if you wanna work for a quality operator. And why wouldn't you? So what should go onto your dive instructor CV? And more importantly, what should you leave out? Well, do you have a pen and paper handy? Because I'm gonna give it to you. So let's start with what you should absolutely include. Of course, your name and contact information. Make sure you give as many different contact points as possible because you don't know what your future employer is gonna prefer. Maybe they use Facebook Messenger, maybe they use WhatsApp, Skype, email, or good old cell phone. Make sure they've got as many different options to contact you as possible. You absolutely wanna include your nationality and any visas or work permits that you hold, particularly if they're specific to the area that you're going to work in. Next up, of course, list your scuba qualifications. What instructor ranking do you hold? What specialties can you teach? And what agencies do you teach for? Only include your student and course counts if it's impressive. If you're fresh out of your IE, don't put zero students down because that doesn't add anything to your CV. You may want to include your total number of log dives though, but don't fudge that number. We can tell. College education, military experience, particularly if it's relevant, absolutely needs to be in there. Very important, supplementary skills. See later in this video for the top five supplementary skills most in demand by dive centers. Previous work experience, of course, especially scuba related or not, and absolutely include references. Straight off the bat, before interview, in this industry it moves so fast with the hiring procedure, give your references on the CV, pass supervisors who will vouch for your work, absolute gold, give all of that up front. Now let's look at what you should absolutely not put on your CV when applying for a dive instructor job. Number one, your age. It's not relevant. Next thing to leave out of a scuba CV, this long-winded bio paragraph about all your other hobbies and interests, no one cares. It's 2019, nobody cares you like Frisbee golf. Stop it. You don't need to put your high school down on a job for a dive instructor. Nobody from Tanzania to Tasmania gives a damn that you went to Columbus High or wherever. Personally, I don't recommend putting down your IDC center on your CV. And I'll tell you why, this is kind of a touchy one, but in case you don't know this already, the dive world is very cliquey and some good training centers, because of their success, have a negative bias towards them by less successful dive centers. So even if you did your training in a totally awesome place that's well-renowned for producing great instructors, there can be a jealousy bias against those locales and people actually don't hire from certain schools. It's moronic, it's backwards thinking, but that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. So I generally leave where I did my IDC off of my CV. If you wanna include it, do it, but understand that you're running a little bit of a risk there. Of course, if you get asked directly at interview, then you can proffer that information. Next thing I see all the time on CVs, which is a massive mistake, is relationship status. You do not need to put that on a CV for a dive instructor job, unless you're specifically applying for a job that has been advertised as seeking a couple. But I used to get CVs all the time from the most experienced as the couple that lists all their qualifications and experience. And a little footnote somewhere in the cover letter that says, oh, by the way, my boyfriend, girlfriend is also a scuba instructor and is also looking for work. Goody for them. Let them apply as well. And if I like them, I'll hire them. But I'm not doing a two for one. And the reason I'm not doing a two for one is if one of you decides to quit, that's probably going to take the other one with them. And then I'm going to be left with two vacancies. Why would I do that? Another waste of CV space that I see a lot. <laughs> And I don't know why this is a thing, but for some reason, dive instructors like to list all of the dive equipment that they own on their CV. Uh, I don't care. You're a professional diving instructor. I'm presuming you've got all your own gear and I'm presuming that it's presentable and in a serviceable condition. This is a little side tip though. One of my favorite questions to ask somebody at an interview. Oh, so what dive gear are you rocking right now? And if they couldn't tell me the make and the name of the model, of their regulator and their BCD, they won't get in the job. My last recommendation of what to leave off of your dive instructor CV is any additional personal information that some people seem to want to share, like whether you have tattoos or not, whether you're a smoker or not. The reason I don't put those details on a CV is because the CV's job is to get you the interview and the interview's job is for you to make an impression on the hiring decision maker. Why would you give them additional reasons to disqualify you? You know, I understand that there's family focused resorts out there that still don't like to hire people with tattoos. That's fine. 
fine, let them find out at interview. Next, I wanna talk about profile pictures for a second, and that can either be a picture you're including in your CV or your social media presence. So what I'm always surprised to see is when people include a profile picture of them scuba diving. Oh wow, you can scuba dive? You're going for a job as a dive instructor. I would hope you can scuba dive. Do you know what would be a better use of space on your CV than a photo of you scuba diving? A photo of you carrying tanks, or a photo of you cleaning a toilet, or a photo of you taking the trash out. All of that would be way more impressive to me. This big guy was so brave with the thunder. I would like to know in the comments below, what is your dream dive job? If you had no restrictions and everywhere was hiring and you could work anywhere at any dive center, let me know in the comments below, what would that be? So you want a job as a dive instructor, but you're fresh out of your IE and you have zero confirmed kills. I'm, I mean, certified students. But everywhere that you're looking requires experience. How do you get experience if you don't have a job? That old catch 22. And it's true, why would I hire you when I could hire a dive instructor with 10 years of experience for the exact same per hour money? Which by the way is just another injustice in this industry, don't even get me started. Let me give you a little secret right now. The number of students that you've certified is not as impressive as the supplementary skills that you can offer to the operation as a whole. What you've got to understand is for most dive jobs all around the world, being an Aussie, being an open water scuba instructor is the minimum requirement. Congratulations on passing your IE. You have now reached the minimum required standard to get a job as a dive instructor. So you need to ask yourself this question. Now I'm qualified as a dive instructor, what other skills can I offer? Because if you're an open water scuba instructor with no experience and with no supplementary skills, you are gonna find it very hard to find your dream job. So as promised and from my experience, here are the top five most in-demand supplemental skills dive centers are looking to hire. And just to be clear, by supplemental, I mean skills that have no direct relationship to actually diving. So I'm leaving out things like being a service technician or being an underwater photographer. Number one, without doubt, the ability to teach in different languages. So absolutely on your CV, you want to include all the languages that you can teach scuba in. Now that's the sticking point there. If you went on holiday to Greece once and you ordered a souvlaki in perfect Greek and the waiter didn't answer you in English, that doesn't qualify. Do you have the vocabulary to be able to teach every scuba course in that language. Number two, boating skills. Are you a captain? Are you an experienced first mate? United States Coast Guard certification, RYA certification, awesome. Of course, all of those are relevant skills. You do wanna check what the requirements are in the parts of the world that you're interested in working because not all certifications are universally valid. Also, don't forget to list the size and types of crafts that you've got experience handling. In demand skill number three, any trade skills that you've got, be that mechanical, plumbing, electric, landscaping, carpentry, dive centers need painting, dive centers need gardening, engines need fixing. If you can add that to their internal skill pool, it's gonna make you stand out. This is totally random, but I once hired a dive instructor who had a background in forest management. Now, that didn't mean a damn thing until we had a hurricane on our doorstep and then all of a sudden we needed to fell and top trees. Oi, Woody Woodpecker, come over here. Your time to shine, bro. Those skills are very much in demand. Don't be afraid to put them on your CV. It is relevant experience. Skill tip number four is marketing, sales, social media, and any kind of computing skills that you've got. Very much in demand by dive centers. Dive centers are always looking for creative ways to generate more revenue. And broadly speaking, as an industry, we're normally behind the curve when it comes to modern marketing strategy. So if you're coming to diving from an industry that's strong in that area, or if that was part of a previous life that you had, those skills are absolutely applicable. If your dream dive center has a retail operation and you can be the person in the shop making active sales rather than just the dive instructor who's drying out in there waiting for their infected mosquito bites to heal until they can get back in the water. That is absolutely a bankable skill. And last but not least, skill set number five that is highly in demand is photography and videography editing skills. I'm talking about professional photo and video editing. Familiarity with Adobe Premiere and DaVinci Resolve, Lightroom, Photoshop, content creation, not just from an internal perspective of helping the dive center, but also from a point of view of serving your guests. A lot of the top class five-star luxury resorts, particularly in photo-centric parts of the world, and I'm thinking like Lembe Straits, Indonesia here, are getting wise to the fact that most of their clients are showing up with 10 or $20,000 camera rigs, and they need to provide facilities for them to do on-site editing, to have a camera room, to be able to view and assess their footage live. So a lot of these resorts have the facilities and are looking for staff to fill them. As technology moves forwards, the photography and videography world is absolutely 
booming. So if you've got these skill sets down, slap them on your CV and your dream job will be begging for you. So professional diving instructor of the world, let's end this crazy trend of random Facebook job begging posts. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to click that little subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you never miss any of our awesome content. It means the world to us, every single subscriber counts, and that's what helps us to keep making these videos. As I said, this was part one of a two-part series. In the second part, we're gonna focus on how to narrow down your search area, find dive centers you really, really want to work for, then using the resume that you've prepared through this video, how to approach the hiring manager in a way that's gonna get their attention. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this Mouthpiece Monday. If you did, you can check out our other Mouthpiece Mondays here. I'll put a link to the playlist. And for an added treat down there, you're gonna find our series on diving Grand Cayman. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's James. Thank you so much for watching. This was your Mouthpiece Monday for this week from Divers Ready. Dive safe, dive often.